Our story is a rich and beautiful tale about the journey of the proud and noble Boyd family who grew from seedlings to a big forest in Kilmarnock, Scotland. The Boyds, lords of Kilmarnock and residents of Dean Castle, were one of the most powerful and influential families in Scotland. Their family tree planted deep roots throughout Scottish history, from supporting William Wallace and Robert the Bruce to fighting major battles during the Scottish Wars of Independence and the Jacobite Rebellion. The family's prominence in key moments throughout history ensured they were exposed to both success and failure, depending on the royals they pledged their allegiance to or the battles they chose to fight. Our first hero in this tale is Sir Robert Boyd, one of the bravest of the noble family. The setting for his heroic tale is the Battle of Bannockburn, where Robert the Bruce's Scots army fought with King Edward II's English troops over two days of intense and bloody battle. The Scots were outnumbered, but not outmaneuvered, as demonstrated by Robert Boyd charging with the right wing of Bruce's army through the boggy <coughs> battlefield, armed with pikes, swords and axes, to meet the English troops in a tangled, twisted mess of animals, men and weapons, all under the shadow of Stirling Castle. As the sound of fighting fell silent, all that could be heard on that historic day was the sound of King Edward and his English troops retreating from the battlefield clambered and clawed their way through a mass of dead bodies and miles of boggy battlefield before making a run for the border. As the English fled south, the Scots were left to deal with the aftermath of the bloody battle and paid their respects to the brave warriors who fought and died at their side for two days. Then the Scots celebrated their triumphant victory with a night of jubilant celebration and feasting. After Bannockburn, Robert Boyd is summoned to Robert the Bruce's castle. Once inside the castle, he is led to a candlelit great hall by one of Bruce's courtiers. For his loyalty and bravery in the field of battle, Robert Boyd was granted a charter by King Robert the Bruce, which gifted him lands in Kilmarnock. Sir Robert Boyd continued to serve his country until he was eventually captured by the English army after a fierce battle. He died shortly after this, but he did not die in vain, as through his acts of bravery and loyalty to Scotland, he left us the legacy of Dean Castle. Throughout history, the Boyds maintained close links to Scotland's kings and queens. King James II raised the Boyd's family to the peerage, granting them the title Lord Boyd, after they supported the king during the Civil War. Boyd's son, Thomas, also married the king's sister, Princess Mary. In doing so, he elevated the family from a relatively minor Scottish family to the upper echelons of royal society. While a younger Boyd, was a military tutor to the young King James III. These close royal ties made the Boyd's enemies very jealous indeed. So much so that they conspired to convince the King that they were becoming too powerful in Scotland and were possibly after the throne itself. This forced Lord Boyd to flee the country as he had been summoned to answer the charges of treason that had been made against his family. The second branch of the Boyd family tree demonstrates the strength and stability of the family thanks to Robert Boyd, the fifth Lord Boyd. The Boyd family returned to favour in Scotland under Mary Queen of Scots. Through her kindness, all of the family estates and titles were restored. 
this gesture from Mary would not be forgotten as Robert declared his allegiance to his queen. His loyalty was so strong that he felt it was his duty to defend her at the Battle of Langside in 1568. He fought bravely that day, but he could not stop a defeat which caused Mary, Queen of Scots, to go into exile. Even after her defeat and exile, Robert continued to support his queen, and this did not go unnoticed by Mary, who then entrusted him with the management of her affairs while she was imprisoned in England. As a result of Robert's actions, he helped to entrust the castle to future generations of Boyds. As the Boyd family tree grew, each new branch brought with it the responsibility of maintaining the family name, the titles, and the ancestral home at Dean Castle. This responsibility was now passed on to William Boyd, the fourth Earl of Kilmarnock. William had a hard act to follow in the long line of Boyds, but he tried to remain faithful to his family roots to ensure their future success at Dean Castle. The hard work to build and maintain the castle over 400 years was sadly undone one fateful night when a fire broke out in the kitchen. The embers from the kitchen soon spread throughout the castle, quickly engulfing each room of the building as timbers and tapestries took light, eventually causing total devastation of the Boyd family home. As if losing the castle wasn't heartbreaking enough, William was also deep in financial trouble. This loss of home and wealth ultimately led William to join the Jacobite Rebellion. In doing so, he carried on the tradition of the Boyds carving out deep roots throughout Scottish history. At the time of joining the Jacobite Rebellion, William's servant at Dean Castle had a premonition that she had seen a severed head tumbling down the staircase. Should have been a warning to William of the fate that lay before him. As shortly after the Battle of Culloden, William was captured by the government troops and tried for treason before the House of Lords. The High Court doth award that you, William, Earl of Kilmarnock, shall be drawn from your prison cell in the tower to the place of execution. When you arrive there, you must be hanged by the neck, but not till you are dead. For you must be cut down alive, then your bowels removed and burnt before your own eyes. Then your head will be severed and your body cut into four quarters. And God Almighty, be merciful to your soul. If only William had listened to the warning from his maid, perhaps he wouldn't be imprisoned and waiting execution in London. But no matter what pain is inflicted on William at the hands of the executioner, they cannot sever the deep roots of the Boyds in Scotland. The Royal Guards inform William that he is lucky. He shall not be hung, drawn and quartered today but instead he will meet his maker at the hands of the axeman at Tower Hill. It's a cold, wet day in London, as William is led through the rain by two guards onto a stone platform at Tower Hill. A large crowd has gathered to watch the execution. With one fell swoop of the execution of axe, William Boyd. He was executed in London on the 18th of August, 1746. This signaled the tragic end of the Boyds at Dean Castle, as the family titles were confiscated. The generations of brave, loyal Boyds leave the legacy of Dean Castle, the former seat of the family, where the deep roots of Scottish history will be fossilized. <laughs>